Hi, uh, Andy here again. Uh, welcome to the next installment of uh, How to Build a Fishing Rod. Uh, today we're going to uh, remount the corks, fit them to the rod blank, and glue them into place, uh, which is the basically the first step in uh, building a rod. So I am going to take and I will relocate the camera. I will uh, orient it so we can see what we're doing here on the bench, and we will glue up a glue up a fishing rod. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, we're going to mount our or prepare to mount our corks and our reel seat. Uh, so the first thing we really have to do before we do any gluing is uh, we have to get the corks to fit on the rod blank. Uh, if I take this this cork handle right here and if I thread it down the rod blank like so, you can see it only goes so far down the rod it doesn't go far enough to uh, see if I move this over so you can get a better look at it. It doesn't go far enough to uh, to the end of the rod. It's way too long so we need to we need to ream some of the cork out to, uh, to get it to size, which is what all these reamers are for. Now what I did before I started this video was I, I took the liberty of, of uh, running these reamers through a little bit to save on some time. So I, I started off with the smallest reamer and I, I ran it through all the way and then I went to the next size up and I ran that one through just about all the way. So we will start there. And what we're going to do is we're going to chuck this reamer up in my in my drill. Let me back off here so you guys can see better. So I've chucked the reamer up in my drill, and this being the this being the end that's going to go to the the base of the rod. You put that in first, and that's of course the fatter taper and the rod tapers from that way. Finish that one off, and you go to the next size up. Same thing, take the rod, or the handle. Now when you ream these, don't force it. Uh, if you force it, it will, it will cause the hole to be out of center. So what you want to do is you want to let the, let the reamer do the work and back it out a bunch of times to clear off the residue. And this, this is the point here where you want to, you want to check it frequently because you don't want to take too much off if you can get away with it. So you want to, you want to check it pretty frequently. Okay, that's, we actually took a little more off than I would have liked to, but that's okay. Uh, it'll, it'll still work and it'll work just fine. So there, there's where our first handle will go. So now what we'll do is we'll, uh, We'll take the real seat. Actually, let me let me scratch that. I will take a winding check, one of these rubber winding checks. And what these winding checks are is they're just a little piece of rubber on here, and they're used to finish off the ends of the corks. So you'll put the winding check on first, like so, followed up by the cork. And what that winding check will do, as you'll see, it'll, it'll finish the cork off nicely so it's got a good clean finish. Actually, this winding check's a little big. I'm going to go to the next size down. Winding check. Cork handle. There we go. Alright, so that's right where we're going to put our handle. And this is totally a preference thing. There is no right or wrong way to do this. You do this however you like. Uh, if somebody tries to tell you you have to put it here, say, no, nope, I'll put it wherever it's comfortable for me to fish with. So then the next piece that's going to go on there, and we're just doing a dry fit now, the next piece is the first part of the reel seat, which is going to go right there. And I'm using a two-piece reel seat for this build, and I will, uh, that's because that's the reel seat I prefer. But I'm just dry fitting everything right now anyway. So now I grab another winding check, and I run that down the rod. OK. 
Okay, now we'll take the second half of this reel seat, which the reel seat's inside of it's got a piece of foam. It's a piece of styrofoam. It's, uh, it's what I use as an arbor, and I glued this in there ahead of time uh, with the same epoxy that we're going to use to glue the handles up. And this also needs to be reamed to size. Now, like I said, again, I took the liberty of doing some reaming ahead of time to save time here, but I don't, that's not quite enough. See, it falls short of where I want the winding check to be. So I need to take a little more out. Now, this styrofoam that you use for the arbor is extremely easy to remove. I mean, you can hog a lot of material away. I do this by hand and go very, very slowly and very, very cautiously because you don't want to overdo it. You want it to fit just right. And there it is. It's just right. So there's, uh, there's the beginning of our handle. Now we can go ahead and we can use another winding check here or we can use this style of winding check which would be a big big rubber basically it's a big rubber grommet uh, let's let's try this one let's see how this one looks first I'll try this one out all the purpose of this winding check is to do is to cover up the end I don't like the way that looks I'm gonna use the big rubber grommet a lot of people will use a four cork in this position. There, lovely. And you can do that too. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing saying you can't utilize a piece of cork up here. I just, I prefer not to. I like the look of this better. So you can see here, here is our handle, uh, basically dry assembled. So what we've got, We've got a winding check here. We've got our reamed out piece of cork, the first half of our reel seat, another winding check, the second half of our reel seat, and then the rubber bumper or another winding check, whatever you prefer. Now, so everybody's asking, why am I using a two-piece reel seat? Because that's what I like to fish with. And that's the beauty of building a custom fishing rod, is you can do whatever you want to fish with it. Now, if I wanted a one-piece reel seat, this makes the whole process even easier because you don't have these two pieces to deal with. You still ream out the arbor. Now this one inside here, you see has got a graphite arbor. You'd still ream that out so you can fit that on there. Or, there's the other style which a lot of people do and I will I will demonstrate what that is. Let's take all these off. Say you don't want to use the styrofoam arbor, which is perfectly fine, and you can certainly do that. And then what you do is when you put this reel seat on, you can see there's a lot of play and a lot of slop in here, right? Well, you got to take up all that extra extra room. So you take your uh, you take a china marker or some kind of white pencil, and you make a mark. Okay, so you know that's where the end of your reel seat goes. And you know that your butt end of your reel seat starts somewhere in here. So what you can do in this instance, if you don't want to use a foam arbor, once you get this handle glued on, you can use a little masking tape to build the arbor up. If I can get the masking tape to work here. And I'm only doing this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to take this back off because I don't like these, these arbors and I don't like the one-piece reel seats, but that's my preference. So you can take and you can build up an arbor of masking tape. And this is perfectly acceptable. A lot of people do this. They've been building fishing rods like this for years and it seems to work. So you get a you get a build up a tape on there, and then you take your reel seat and you push it back over again. It's still loose. I need more. So take some more tape. Okay. 
and I'll build up some more arbor on here. More build up more tape. Let's see where that lands. I always do the one closest to the cork first. Perfect. That's lovely. Where's my mark? There it is. That's where my real seat's got to land. So now I need to build up another arbor up here. A minimum of two. Some guys would do three. Uh, I'm going to go with a minimum of two. So you just build up more tape up here and this will support the front. Now what's going to be What's going to be difficult about this is you're not, it's going to be hard to, hard to feel whether or not this front arbor has enough tape on it. I'm going to show you a little trick here. I'm going to take this real seat off and I'm going to flip it around the other direction only to determine whether or not I have enough tape on this front arbor or not. And it turns out I have the exact amount of tape I need on that front arbor. It works out perfect. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to flip the real seat around again. Because this is the way it should be. Lay that up against my cork handle. And there. Now you have your traditional style fishing rod handle. And you can again take your rubber winding check or whatever you're going to use to finish it off like that. However, I don't like this style of real seat so I'm actually going to take all that back off and we're going to go put the original the original real seat on there that I was going to use. But there's nothing wrong with doing it this way and then what you do is when you do glue this up you just make sure that you get enough glue around all the edges of your tape and in between your tapes to completely encapsulate the whole rod. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off, I'm going to remove this tape so we can go back to using the other reel seat. So stand by. Alright, we're back. So we're going to, uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to prep the butt cork for for mounting on here. Obviously you, uh, you see the hole on the butt cork is way smaller than the than the diameter of the rod. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. Uh, you can take a drill bit and this, this actually works pretty well. You could take a drill bit which is about the same diameter. This turns out this is about a half an inch. And you can take and you can you can turn this in by hand very slowly and very gently, but you want to be extremely slow and extremely gentle. In fact, you can even go backwards and do the same, get the same effect to hog this cork out. Let's see, I'm actually running the drill bit in reverse. A little bit forward, a little bit backwards. So you can see it's making it larger, which is going to fit on here. Do this by hand. Do not use a power drill because I'm here to tell you if you do this with a drill, you will take chunks and hog it out and it'll just be, it'll just be ugly. So take a hand or a drill, turn it by hand in reverse, good sharp one. You can turn it forward a couple of times just to loosen some stuff up and then back it off again. Knock this out periodically. Just take your time. Do not be in a hurry for this because if you are in a hurry you're going to take out chunks and it's going to get ugly real fast. Okay, I've just about got it. That's about where I want this. Perfect. There it is. It's that easy. No big mystery here. You're just making making everything fit. 
and you're doing whatever you need to do to make that happen. So we've got our butt cork about where we like it. I, I generally try to run my handles uh, right around nine inches is where I like them ish but it's completely completely how much you like I like about nine inches so that's where I run it if you like them ten make them ten if you like them eight make it eight this is the beauty of a custom rod and doing it yourself you do it the way you want it so we've got our butt cork prepped we got our handle or rear cork prepped we have our reel seats ready to go now it's time to assemble so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera off I'm gonna run the vacuum I'm gonna clean up a little bit of my mess here and then we're gonna prepare to glue this stuff together so we can have so we can let it sit and then come tomorrow we can uh, we can start wrapping so I'm gonna shut the camera off I'm gonna clean up a little of my mess and then we'll start gluing together